And today we'll talk about the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Of course, you have Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We, I'll cover that one after this video, but and also claims that one Pokemon will be very hard to get. I'll talk about that one too. Too, but today we'll be talking about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And apparently, the Undertale composer is still making songs for Pokemon. I thought he didn't. I, I thought it was like a one-time deal thing, but apparently not. Apparently not. But apparently, he's still apparently he's still making. Yo. But these are the, the most important, one of the more important parts of the game, the graphics. Okay, there are people who are defending this graphics and this, this is your typical, you know, Pokemon defender. Okay, they're going to always tell you, and it's the same thing with Minecraft 8 Deluxe tracks. It's just an art style. Just get over it. Why do you care about the graphics so much? Why do you care about the graphics so much? It's not the sort of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as we all know now. It's also the My Kai 8 DLC tracks. My Kai 8 DLC tracks look awful. With the exception of like one or two tracks, a couple tracks, compared to the rest of the tracks. And we all know they're straight ported from My Kai Tour because nobody bought My Kai. Nobody plays My Kai Tour, so they're saying, you know what? Let's put all the My Kai Tour tracks onto My Kai 8. No one will notice. Nobody will care, okay? You know, please, <coughs> Nintendo really thinks that the fan base, and Nintendo probably knows because, pe oh, people will defend us anyways if we put these low quality Mario Kart 8 tracks. Nobody will know. Nobody will know, and nobody will care. Okay. Nobody will know it's the downgrading graphics from the original game because it's just an art style. You need to get over it. And I get it. People used to do this to defend indie games. From people like me who used to say, Oh yeah, indie games suck because they had bad graphics. Which is not really a reason to hate it. Which is, which again, indie games, they're only made by like one or two people. Or people to attack old games. Oh, they, they you know, you know Pac-Man, you know these Atari games? They look abysmal. I feel sorry for people who didn't get to play Call of Duty back in the day. Okay? I think the whole reason people defend stuff like this is because of the Call of Duty fandom and, you know, Halo fandom and that. You know, people who play on Xbox and PlayStation. Telling people, oh, Nintendo, you play on Nintendo? These games look inferior to our Xbox and PlayStation games. But this is not acceptable. When you compare this, and what we are talking about is we compare this to the original. Monica 8 tracks, okay. Okay. If we compare this to our original Mario Kart 8 track, okay. This is what the this is what a base game track looks like in Mario Kart 8. Oh I didn't think it's battle course. But in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, this is what a base game track looks like. Look at the level of detail they put into the tracks. The level of detail and stuff they put into the tracks. Okay, and then we have Mario Kart 8, you know. Textures and they look very plain and very very bad. Okay, they look really bad. Look at Coconut Mall. This looks pretty bad. Okay, for the Wii it looks pretty good, cause the Wii is a cause that's what they could handle on the Wii. But this is a, the Switch can handle way more than this. Is what I'm saying. Same thing with Pokemon. If you compare Pokemon to Xenoblade, people are like, why do you care about the Bray? And the next thing they'll say. The next thing they'll say is, why do you care about blades of grass? <laughs> and that's what they say. Look at Xenoblade 3. This is, this is on the same console as Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Pokemon Sword and Sealed, and Pokemon Reds and Zarceus. Okay. You know, here. And then this will bring up the people of the It's Just an Art Style. The people of the It's Just an Art Style. But the fact that Xenoblade and the, and the original developers of Mario Kart 8 put so much effort and love and care into their games. Yes, Xenoblade 3 does not work, work like, you know, an Xbox One or PS4. Oh, no, Xbox One, PS5, Xbox Series X, S, and Xbox One game. But it does look pretty stunning for a Switch game. Okay. It does look pretty stunning. It looks like they put effort and detail into the game. 
game. Of course, there are decisions that they put in that are far worse than the graphics. At making one of the main characters a cat go, but that's like that's a million times worse. That's like the worst cardinal sin of gaming. I mean, I mean, you could just had just normal people in the game. No, we had to have a go of cat yells, but overall, Zero Blade works a million times better than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But yet, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is the billion dollar franchise. Which, again, so that people will buy games of not good, which means. Really, gamers don't care about graphics. If people were willing to buy these games over and over again, Game Freak's not going to care about improving the graphics of the games. Hey, people will buy our games anyways, even though we watch them out and put them out yearly, because Pokemon fans will never criticize, at least, and especially the big YouTubers and the big TikTok channels, will never criticize the press as Game Freak and say, oh yeah, we're, we're blindly excited for games, you know. I'm not really excited for games anymore because there's just no point in blindly being excited for something that may be complete garbage when it comes out. Okay. Okay, there are only very few times I'm actually excited for a game that comes out anymore. Because there was a high chance that the game could be buggy, gritty, and all that stuff. And Nintendo was like the only company that really, even Nintendo is doing this stuff now, releasing unfinished games on launch. Mario Strikers Battle League is an example of this. Nintendo Switch Sports is an example of this. Every company has now made a the cardinal sin of gaming, releasing an unfinished, broken or or a broken and unpolished game at once, which is completely sickening that every developer has basically done this now. No developer is safe from this now, which is completely sad. The developers only care about you know oh. DLC, microtransactions, oh, how much money can make off the game? Again, gaming is a business for and forefront. But the problem is we don't really get that much love and pass into our games anymore. Very few develop, very few p- games are really made of that love, care, and passion. Most games, which is why the games like the Avengers failed, is that ga- Avengers was, hey, you know what those Avengers movies make billions of dollars? Let's make an Avengers game. And not make it, and make it complete garbage of, you know, with glitches and stuff, and only to basically just sell you, hey, look at this, you buy, buy our expansion packs, oh, oh, wait, Spider-Man, you know, you guys love Spider-Man, oh, you have to buy a fucking PlayStation to play Spider-Man, sorry, uh, that's the rules we set out, and it's so annoying that developers do this stuff, okay, we need the, we need the end of console walking, it's completely stupid, we don't, again, if, if of course a character is exclusively owned by a console, then there's like nothing you can do about it. But does saying, oh yeah, but he, he, if you buy this first and on this console, you can get this character. But oh, oh, you can't get this character on the Xbox or Switch. Even though the character is not even owned by Sony. Same thing with Xbox. Oh, wait, oh, wait, there's a character on Xbox. Imagine, it's like playing Kratos only on the PlayStation version. Or especially if the new Dragon Ball Z Fortnite thing. Playing Goku only on the PlayStation. So you're forced to buy a PlayStation if you want to play as Goku in Fortnite. It's just completely sickening developers do this kind of stuff still. I get it. It's supposed to it's deals they do with the console makers, but, but it's old. Especially day one DLC and, you know, gritty and unpolished games. Okay. Maybe, maybe don't release the games like this. Maybe, maybe release less fear. It's mostly EA that does this kind of stuff. Because EA that's only cares about how much profit a game makes. EA and Activision. But come on guys. If you really want to not have games that have controversies anymore. Maybe put out complete products at once. And this trend has slowed down over the times. Because developers have said you know what. Instead of rushing out and making buggy and gritty games at once. That's why we're getting far few games now. Because cause of course there's not many people who want to make games. So... Outside of indie games. So most of the games now are we seen as indie games. Which is sad because. You know indie games are not the only types of games. And, and you know. I would love there to be like for example. An actual good Avengers game. That they you know try to you know. Take your money every second of the day. Basically every time we play it. So yeah that's basically about this video. Goodbye.